So what's with all these P's and possible universes? Wouldn't it be simpler to just show circles and relative probabilities? Well, I'm trying to demonstrate some deep philosophical principles here, and it's easier with the possible universes. Our brains are Bayesian reasoning devices, or at least they sort of work that way. Now, they're not perfect, but they don't have to be. Sometimes you don't have to have a perfect solution to a problem. Sometimes a good solution is all it takes. Let's do a little thought experiment. I want you to consider here two tribes. Let's call them Tribe A, the Abutus, and Tribe B, the Bonobos. Okay, now Tribe A gets it in their mind that their agriculture would be improved if they used crop rotation. Now, here's, here's what might have gone on inside the minds of the Abutus. Let's take a look at the plate that contains their peas and how they might have thought about this. Members of the Abutu tribe have some level of belief that they may live in a universe where crop rotation makes their fields more productive. They may have other beliefs too, like chanting or sacrificing animals, but they started examining the evidence. And the more that Tribe A practiced crop rotation, the more the evidence seems to correlate with that belief. That is, most of the experiments where farmers practiced crop rotation seem to produce more yield. Now the bonobos were working with a different hypothesis. They believed that dancing around a maypole would improve their harvest. It's not exactly clear where they got this idea and how they thought the evidence supported this idea. In fact, it's not clear that they even were looking at the evidence. Sometimes we sort of like our ideas and we don't really want to look at the evidence. But even if they were looking at the evidence, it's possible that they were confusing themselves. See, data from the real world is noisy, and sometimes we see patterns in the noise even when there isn't any. Sort of like when we see animals in the clouds if we stare up at the sky long enough. Dancing around a maypole was and still is a fertility ritual that's practiced in many parts of the world seriously. Now let's take our thought experiment a little farther. What if we had a drought for several years? Now, the Abutus might fare better. They've been practicing crop rotation, and crop rotation is effective, so their crops might be healthier and they might survive the drought, or maybe they have grain stockpiled from years gone by, and that helps them survive the drought. At the same time, the bonobos might be suffering. There might be starvation and disease going on in their tribe. Members of their tribe might be dying. Members of their tribe might defect and go over and marry members of tribe A. Well, this would create a survival advantage for tribe A and their offspring. Evolution would select for tribe A who's using better reasoning in a Bayesian sense. Tribe A was just smarter. Now, if we stop and think about this for a moment, this might bring us to an astonishing conclusion. This is a definition of what it means to be smart. In fact, it might be the only definition mankind has that isn't laden with a whole lot of problems. To be smart means to use the evidence effectively. Now, how do we use the evidence effectively? That's kind of a complicated issue, but I've broken it down into five principles. First, we have to be honest. There's a lot of pressure on us as individuals to be dishonest. Some of it is social pressure. We fit in with our group better if we say things that they want to hear. Some of it comes from within ourselves. We may not like the truth. We may not want to believe the truth. The truth may not be as interesting or fun, or it may not make us feel as good. 
Second, we have to respect the evidence. There's a lot of reasons we might reject a piece of evidence. Some of this reasoning is known as bias. Maybe we don't accept a piece of evidence because it doesn't fit in with what we want to believe. Or maybe it's just confusing and difficult to use that piece of evidence. Third, we must acknowledge our fallibility. The fact that we are reasoning beings brings along with it the expectation that we'll sometimes make mistakes. We have to understand the types of mistakes we can make and where our weaknesses lie. Often our senses can be fooled. Fourth, don't become devoted to your cherished idea. We have to remain flexible, because if you think you have the ultimate truth, then you're no longer learning. That's what killed the bonobos. There's always a possibly better hypothesis out in the space of possible universes. We don't want to miss an opportunity. And lastly, understand Bayes' theorem. It's the best way I know of to identify where our reasoning is going wrong or how we might be using evidence in a way that isn't to our best advantage. So stick with me for the next couple of videos on Bayes' theorem. There's a lot more astonishing realizations to be found in Bayes' theorem, and there's a lot more advice we can get from Bayes' theorem on how we can be smarter and more effective in our lives.